Greetings everyone. In this episode of Learning from Leaders series, allow me to introduce a luminary who has profoundly impacted the cultural and educational landscapes of not just Rajasthan but the entire nation as a senior bureaucrat who is now the chairman and chancellor of Vivekanand Global University, Dr. Lalit K. Pawar sir. His legacy is further cemented by the recent accolade of VGU being recognized as an a university by UGC, solidifying the institution's commitment to academic excellence under his leadership. From a small town of Balotra in Badmir, Rajasthan, to the corridors of power and wisdom, Dr. Pawar aced it all with his educational odyssey, armed with an MSc and a PhD in tourism, honed by management training at IIM Ahmedabad, Harvard University, the University of Sussex, along with British Council IDS Fellowship from UK, which provided him such a global perspective. On account of his impressive long list of innovative and out-of-box ideas, I cannot help mention that he was the craftsman behind the famous tagline Padharo Mare Des from Rajasthan Tourism in 1992, which left an indelible imprint on the cultural branding of our state. In recognition of his exceptional contributions to the tourism sector, Dr. Pawar was honored with the National Tourism Award by the President himself in 2014. And of course, prior to that, his outstanding contributions in Jaisalmer were recognized as he received the prestigious Best Collector Award in 1988. Another feather in the cap of Dr. Pawar as the Vice Chancellor and founder of the first Rajasthan State Skills University illustrates his commitment to shaping the future through education and ensuring employability. Some other notably powerful positions that he held and did justice to were as former Secretary, Government of India for Minority Affairs and Ministry of Tourism, former Chairman, RPSC, JDA Commissioner and the list goes on and on. So join me in extending a warm welcome to Dr. Lalit K. Pawar Saab, a maestro of public service, a connoisseur of academia and a custodian of cultural heritage. Welcome to our series, yes, sir. Namaskar, Najib. Thank you. Sir, I want to ask you this question that you have excelled both in bureaucratic and academic leadership roles. And currently you are the Chancellor of VGU. So could you shed some light between the distinctions of academic leadership and bureaucratic leadership? What are the similarities or what are the differences uh, you must have experienced yourself? Yeah, yeah. We are world apart. They are worlds apart because uh, when we talk of uh, bureaucratic leadership, mm. you have a structured frame okay. with command structure and SOPs, everything in place. Mm. So you have to be there just as a leader and once you issue an order, then it is complied down the line and there is a pyramid like structure. This is what we call is the bureaucratic leadership right. uh, where you have a line of command, unity of command and very, very detailed instructions, guidelines, circulars, and SOPs. Right. But cut to academic field, and it's a different ball game, in the sense that you are dealing with students, mm -hmm. the energy, you know, the youthfulness, then you are dealing with very highly done professors and senior lecturers, faculty mm -hmm. members, who are, uh, many of them are more qualified than what you are. <laughs> it's very sensitive. So it's a different uh, this thing, but I think there are some common features mm -hmm. that if you're dealing with human, mm -hmm. is with human touch, that works both for academics as well as for bureaucratic uh, leadership also, because after all, what is management? Basically it is how do you manage people and material, that's mm -hmm. all. So, but academic, word is far more sensitive mm -hmm. and far more, uh, I would say, uh, challenging right. than bureaucratic word in some ways. Okay. Yeah. So great. 
one of the things that we understand from Pawar Sab is that uh, while bureaucratic leadership concentrates on line of command and chain of command with clear cut SOPs which have been defined and therefore the implementation is done down the line easily in academic the sensitization uh, is much more so that's the difference but the commonality is the human touch the human element uh, which makes leadership as challenging for both types of roles am yes. I right sir? Yes. Yes. Sir, in uh, management, you spoke about, uh, you know, how we manage people and resources, material, etc. Now, when we discuss the various leadership styles, there are so many that we teach the students or we even conduct MDPs in corporates about, okay, we talk about servant leadership or democratic or laissez fair or we talk about transformational, transactional. So, it's very confusing that, you know, which leadership style is the best. What I want to know and also our viewers, I'm sure, that if you could share your insights into your own personal leadership style, uh, that contributed to your outstanding success. So what is it and uh, how we can follow it? Uh, so far as leadership style is concerned, Veena Ji, uh, I am a great fan of, fan of Indian Army. Okay. And having worked as a collector of a border district, commissioner of a border division, mm -hmm. and born in a border district, worked in a border area, and I, as an IS officer under training, I stayed in BSF officers mess for one year. Oh. So, and I did NCC and uh, scouting for eight years, so uh, I am a Fauji at heart. Okay. And in Fauj, in Indian Army, which is one of the best armies in the world, there is a famous saying that if you want to be a good general, be a good soldier. Okay. That dictum I followed in letter and also in the spirit because my management style has always been very human centric number one right. participative and leading by example i quote a marwadi saying here khud guru ji bengal khave dusra ne updesh sunave that means how can you tell your followers or your team not to do a thing which you are doing yourself exactly. so you have to lead by examples hmm. and that is what i have done number one number two i would consider myself fortunate in that sense that wherever I went and with my human touch I could draw best out of my team members mm -hmm. and their best aggregated and it resulted in my better performance of course so uh, my this is my dad was how old I hear a old story in our house there were two dogs in our house when my mother took them out of the water she loved them my mother, my chali Bakri bhi choli koi baat nahi, dadi maa chalo aaz, paansu gaam dood extra. Even animals respond to the reflexes. Imagine agar aap kisi gai or bakri ko dood nikalne se pali ek jhaapad maar do, wo apne dood ko upur khinch leti hai. So even animals respond to your body language, your communication and your motivational styles. What to talk of human beings. Wonderful, wonderful example you have quoted sir. बहुत ही अच्छा आपने उदाहरण देके हमें समझाया कि भई leading by example is so important besides the human centric approach that you use and of course you use participative management as well. So I am reminded of Gandhi ji because you know जब आपने भी सुना होगा कि एक महिला गई कि मेरा बेटा बहुत चीनी खाता है तो उन्होंने कहा भई बाद में आना तो she was little surprised कि अभी इसको हाथ के हाथ भी तो समझा सकते बाद में भी उन्होंने समझाया she said what was the difference you could have done it earlier तो उन्ह चीनी गुड़ खाना छोडूं तब जाके मैं आपके बेटे को नसीहत दे पाऊंगा। So that is a wonderful input from you. Thank you so much, sir. Sir, you have a reputation of being a master innovator, which is evident through the numerous groundbreaking initiatives you have spearheaded. So what I want to ask you is that could you highlight any particular scheme or project that holds a special place? in uh, your life and what were the challenges and how you overcame those obstacles and what are your leadership traits which came into play during the whole process of planning and implementing that particular scheme or project there are many uh, case studies which i have uh, but for limitation of time and space i would like to share one uh, innovation which i am proud of which i did as chairman of RPC, mm -hmm. digitization of the examination and uh, evaluation system. Okay. 
I conducted 110 exams in two years of my stay as chairman. Mm. Out of 110 exams, 100 exams were online. Oh. So no paper leak, mm -hmm. not a single paper leak, number one. Number two, for the first time in India, we introduced for any state public service commission, including UPSC, the what you call is the on-screen marking of even the descriptive answer sheets. Mm -hmm. okay. And there were a lot of resistance. Huh. But I invited best brains from the country for presentation in my commission office. They made presentation and then I introduced. So it took care of all the complaints about mm -hmm. you know, the unethical and all those uh, copying and all mm -hmm. this thing. Even today, RPSC is practicing. UPSC chairman Gupta Saab, Deepak Gupta Saab, flew in, came to Ajmer, saw that how I would done it. And say, yes, uh, 3.5 million scans were taken of the answer sheets of the RS main exams. Okay. And we get so this. Uh, I can say with a lot of uh, satisfaction that uh, digitization of the process of descriptive answer sheet evolution mm -hmm. is one challenge and innovation which uh, I think uh, paved the way for the result which was declared in 11 days, prelims oh. result. The main so result fast. declared in 60 days mm -hmm. and the final selection from the 60 days we conducted an interview and uh, within six months everything was clear. I, in two years I cleared two RS batch. Wow. So this is one innovation I would like to even today that innovation is, it has been now institutionalized okay. and no complaints whatsoever. Great. Yes. So sir, what was your leadership trait, your quality, which made you go in for such a major Partici change? Participative. What I did when I called best of the brains of our Indian uh, cyber world, all members of the commission, they were, they were sitting, mm -hmm. all members, including some officers who were in charge of the examination and all these things. And they see, they saw the presentation themselves. Right. And I convinced them that we have to, but they were worried. Sir, a very risk. Hai. Ye hai. Nanka, yes. If there is no danger, then there is no danger. Oh, wow. What a matter. If there is no danger, then there is no danger. So, I said, yes, I will own the responsibility. I said to the members, I am the chairman. Yes, I will own the responsibility. But you agree that we should attempt this innovation because and exactly that happened. <laughs> now, when I left RPSC as chairman, my successor also maintained this tradition. Even today, that tradition is maintained. So I'm very happy. Great. It has been now institutionalized. So I would say participative, out of the box, mm -hmm. prone technology. Right. And there was a requirement of integrity, of honesty, of very transparent system. And so much so that descriptive answer sheet evaluation is RTI compliant. Right. You can ask for any answer sheet <coughs> the way it was evaluated. And we trained 250 professors of all University of Rajasthan selected. Right. 76 years Professor Nandlal Vyas, head of department was trained to hold, to handle the mouse on the laptop. <laughs> and I visited all the centers myself. And so I'm very proud of that thing that we could do this. And uh, UPSC is appreciated. And uh, we were declared one of the best commissions in the state. I'm sure because uh, what a key takeaway we have from this uh, innovation of yours is that number one, digitization is here to stay yes. and therefore the sooner we change and take risks, the better it is. In case you are a management professional or any professional for that matter, but if you are risk averse or risk neutral, uh, you can only grow to a small extent. So risk taking is a very important aspect in especially creative and innovative challenges. Calculated aspect. risk. Calculated risk, of course, it should not be foolhardy. Yeah. So that was a wonderful input, sir. Sir, there's this unique thing that all the people who know you, whether they have been your seniors to whom you must have reported or they were your peers who have been very competitive with you yeah. or outsiders like us as observers or external stakeholders, we have always heard about your exceptional decision making skills and so much so that in all the positions that you've held, the efficiency and effectiveness of your decisions have been talked about. So uh, could you share some success mantras on decision making which you believe would be very crucial for the existing and future professionals who want to become leaders like you in times to come? Yes. When we take decision, especially in the government, since I've been in the IS for 43 years now, uh, stakes are very high. 
so we have to really take into account all the pros all the cons and then consult your seniors take everybody on board and take a decision because then you will be held responsible for for the decision Absolutely. now one simple decision for which i took and that really transformed the lives of thousands of teachers and students of rajasthan i would like to share sure as director of education i served as director of school education primary and secondary education from 1988 to 1991 one decision which i took was that teachers if they wanted to go for further studies mm -hmm. they needed permission from the government okay so when i joined there there was a file and they tell they told me my office told me the director sir these are the 100 charge sheets which have been issued to all teachers all over the state because they did without permission ma or phds meena ji i was shocked mm -hmm. you are issuing charge sheet to teachers for further studies <laughs> tab maine unse kaha ki padhai likhai ke mehkme mein padhane likhane walon par padhe likhne ke liye pabandi oh <laughs> what a dichotomy yeah lahor villa ko what shame on all of us the very next day after consulting my seniors and everybody we had a great uh, boss secretary of education harimanji mathur sahab is called himself okay. late harimur mathur sahab i took him he was himself a doctorate okay. and an an authority on the anthropology mm -hmm. so i took him into confidence and issued at an order at my level as director okay. henceforth teachers will not be required to take any permission for further studies wonderful yeah that decision is even today valid thousands of teachers of rajasthan have done their masters their ma their phds and the unions came and they really garlanded me sir ye bahut bada ye ho gaya and <coughs> i am proud of that decision which even today right. is health currency and this is what you call that i took a bold decision because i could have been charged by the government how can you take the decision at your level as director this is government decision mm -hmm. because there are in government half a million employees 5 lakhs Absolutely. teachers are only 3 lakhs what about those 2 lakhs they will say we will also study okay So, Mr. Sir, with the issue, the order which I issued, I incorporated as a bureaucrat two clause, which was called safety walls. Number one, teachers will not be allowed to pursue their further studies unless they have completed their teaching assignments okay. and they have conducted the exams. Okay. Beyond that, they are free to study. So, kind of eligibility clause which, which help it. which help everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. So, when sir. Chief Minister then appreciated and he said, "Yes, Mr. Sir." जो पढ़ता नहीं है उसे पढ़ाने का कोई हक नहीं है इफ यू डोंट रीड यू हैव नो राइट टू टीच इफ यू आर नॉट अपडेटेड यू आर आउटडेटेड एंड इफ यू आर आउटडेटेड हाउ कैन यू टीच तो इस बात को भारत माना एंड फॉर रेस्ट ऑफ माय लाइफ आई बी प्राउड ऑफ दिस टू डिसीजन डिजिटाइजेशन ऑफ आर एंड अलाउिंग टीचर्स ऑफ राजस्थान टू गो फॉर फर्दर स्टडीज विदाउट एनी गवर्नमेंट अड़चन और विदाउट एनी नीड फॉर परमिशन and this is how great sir i think uh, your ysl is yes. you know your uh, uh, trademark that you should tell people about which, because it's also yes, related yes. to learning uh, yfl uh, i call YFL. it yfl okay. ysl is a fashion brand uh -huh. and uh, i call yfl is my passion brand what is oh. passion <laughs> my passion is learning okay yesterday i was with my wife going to the market to push leta hu main sabji kya bhav hai dhaniya kahan se aaya hai तो मेरी वाइफ ने कहा कि अपने को ज्वार खरीद खानी ज्वार जी, जी. तो मैं बंसल की दुकान है मोती वसंस के सामने वहाँ गया ये ज्वार कहाँ से आई महाराष्ट्र से आई राजस्थान में क्यों नहीं आई कहाँ सब वो होती फागी में दो किलो ज्वार ली हमने सो बट यू नो एवरी मोमेंट यू लर्न फ्रॉम एवरीबडी यू लर्न फ्रॉम द स्टूडेंट फ्रॉम द शॉपकीपर फ्रॉम द सब्जी वाला फ्रॉम दूध वाला टू यू द बेस्ट ऑफ द प्रोफेसर बेस्ट ऑफ लेक्चर्स I have my own laptop and the earphone use करके I go on listening to Rajneesh, Sadguru, best of the professors of Harvard, best of the lectures, you know all those inspiring this thing. Great. And uh, every moment is a learning moment. 
So this is something very unique that we have learned from Pawar Sahib, uh, YFL, that is yearning for learning. And that also corroborates with the CQ, that is the curiosity quotient that every leader is expected to possess if they want to be successful. So, sir, we thank you very much for your time. We are so grateful that you've always willingly supported us in all our initiatives. Thanks for taking part in Learning from Leaders series. Yeah, thank yeah. you, and I'm grateful Thanks. to your organization for giving me this chance. And uh, it's my privilege to share uh, the screen with you and uh, whatever little I know, share. And I wish you a grand success to thank you, you. Thank to you, Rajan sir. and your team. Thank you.